So I'm just going to overview some of the um, basic commands and T-splines that we use to create a rough approximation of this uh, shoe. And we started out with a background image, and that was placed using the background bitmap command, um, just by typing BA into Rhino, you get background bitmap. Um, and then once we're inside the background bitmap command, we have subcommands. Um, like align, extract, grayscale. Um, so if we want to change the alignment or just move this image around, we can just click move and um, adjust the position of the background bitmap. So something like that that is just in a uh, near the origin. And this is in the right viewport. So I have of this shoe, I have a uh, side view and a bottom view. Um, and it's not super important that these be precisely aligned. So I'm just going to start with the right side view and um, build a bit on that and then we can come to the bottom view later. So without further ado, I'm just going to go to T-splines, primitives, and box. And I'm going to draw a kind of a cube that approximates the ankle and heel area. So here's a rectangle, but I can't finish that uh, into a cube in this viewport. So I'm just going to select perspective and um, and just create you know a, a rough cube shape and again this isn't super important this be precise um, I can also just in perspective drag this a bit closer to the origin um, again it's not going to be symmetrical it's not super important but um, this will just help me later on um, so let me just drag this back here I dragged it on the wrong axis um, okay, so I want it to be here. Okay, so something like that. And then obviously I'm going to need to kind of sculpt this into a shoe form. Um, so I need to have my T-Splines toolbar, and I need to activate or enable the uh, T-Splines HUD. So I just click that uh, kind of power on button. If I don't have this... Um, window or this toolbar visible, I can right click on a blank toolbar area, go to show toolbar, and then all the way at the bottom uh, you should have a T-splines option. Um, okay, so here I have different modes of selecting and, and manipulating uh, the T-splines object. I'm going to start with uh, working with faces. Um, so if I select the face icon here, then it, that allows me to select faces and by holding shift I can select multiple faces at the same time. So if I select faces um, in this position here and, ex and um, move these faces, so if I select the translate widget, that will allow me to just click and drag and pull these faces out to somewhere that they need to be. So I'm just going to go through and just kind of make these operations and then I'm going to need to subdivide um, subdivide these further. So I'm just going to drag this about out to here. I can select the um, top faces. So first I'll, I'll subdivide here. Um, and I can do that by typing TS insert point. So that'll subdivide by um, uh, by selecting points on edges. So this point that it snaps to is effectively the midpoint. I'm just going to make one loop um, all the way around here. Um, and it's not strictly necessary that I complete um, the whole loop, but T-Spines generally is happier um, when you when you do, so I'm going to just do that for now. And then press spacebar to finish. And now I have a bit more detail and I can manipulate this um, model a bit more effectively. Um, so I can select these faces here and again move those down. I can do that in the right viewport to try to get a bit closer to where I want to be. Um, Maybe move these faces as well. 
So this is very imprecise, but um, just trying to get a rough approximation of the shoe. Um, the next major important thing in the shoe topology is that it has an opening here. So if I just select these two faces and click delete, um, it's now giving me an opening, but it's reverted to this kind of boxy mood. And that's because with this current uh, layout, it doesn't understand how to smooth this model. Um, so I'm going to add another insert point, and I'm going to add a loop around here. Um, and it still doesn't quite work. Um, it's because it's really confused about this connection here. Um, because we have a bunch of lines intersecting and it doesn't know what's supposed to be a continuous loop and it just doesn't really like triangles in general. Um, so I'm going to select edge select. Now I can select edges and I'm going to delete these edges here. So that kind of smoothed out a bit but it's still a bit funny. Um, and if I select a symmetrical edge here now it's changed its mind about where the loops are and it's generally happier. So now I can go back and um, sculpt the form a bit more. I can marquee select all of these edges here and uh, and scale them. So there's a scale widget as well. Um, so I can scale in this direction and move this whole ring over a bit so it aligns better um, and I can go back into right viewport and try to make things um, line up a bit more closely with my uh, with my target so um, I'm just going to move things around a bit more and, and subdivide a bit further um, again only subdivide where you absolutely need it because otherwise you're just going to end up with a more complicated model um, than you want to have. And um, uh, try to keep it simple and um, then we'll import a uh, top view image in a bit. So I'm, I'm going back and forth between the perspective viewport and the right viewport and just uh, selecting curves from the um, using the edge select here. So I can select a couple curves at a time and um, and move those and then just going back and forth and slowly getting closer and closer to um, something at least from this viewport that looks more like it fits the general shape and so I can see there's some issues here and a lot of times it's easier just to clean up the surface topology um, in the mesh model um, so for example I can see I don't really want this triangulation here and I have a problem here I kinda want these to be more or less symmetrical so let's um, first just delete this face here um, okay so there wasn't actually a line there um, so we can do an insert point here then we can delete this line um, and we can do something similar here and then delete these triangles or delete this line so it's um, quadrilateral so T-splines usually prefers quadrilaterals to um, triangles so now essentially we can look at, at rings like loops and, and see how all these quadrilaterals kind of form loops of some sort um, and it doesn't matter that things aren't perfectly aligned because we're going to have to move all this stuff around later anyway um, so now if I go back to smooth toggle um, I get something a bit more like that that looks a bit better um, I still need to adjust some points but at least um, there's no major errors and um, I now have um, a loop that kind of goes here which will help me define this heel better and just add a bit more detail I think this is a, about as much detail as I want to have 
Um, it's an appropriate level of detail for this rudimentary model. Um, I don't want too much more than this. So I'm just going to keep tweaking a, a couple parameters, um, getting this to line up slightly better. And I'm just doing that by going to the right viewport, selecting lines, and um, selecting marquee selecting. So I'm actually selecting two lines. You can't really see, but they're overlapping each other. And then just moving those to kind of fit the image. So select these lines. Maybe I want them to come down and even over a little bit. Um, maybe I even want to move these ones over to correspond to that. And these ones too. So this is pretty imprecise, just kind of sculpting this stuff out. Um, these ones here, I can start to pull down in this shape. And then that means I have to kind of pull these ones back up a bit. So just a lot of back and forth. So now that I have a uh, rough approximation from the right viewport, and it's you know far from perfect, but good enough for now, um, I'm going to go to the bottom viewport. So in perspective, it looks something like this, right? Um, where there's much more definition uh, from the sides than there actually is from the top. From the top, it's just kind of this uh, this dumb extrusion. So I'm going to um, the bottom as well. I'm going to import the bottom image and just use that to kind of add a bit more definition um, from the bottom viewport to make this look a bit more um, foot-like. So we had s replaced the top view with the bottom view by right-clicking on this blue rectangle here and going to set view bottom. Now I'm going to do background bitmap again and place the image of the bottom of the shoe. Um, first, just make an assumption about approximately how big it is, change grayscale, and um, now I know the overall length of the shoe is correct, so I need to scale this background bitmap to more or less fit the extents of this shoe. So it's a little bit too big right now. So I can just scale um, from here to here, something like that. It's still a little bit too big. And then move it to align a bit better. So maybe somewhere around here. Okay, so here's the toe of the shoe and here's the heel. Again, we're looking from the bottom, um, but we can start to move some of these curves around in the same way so they um, align better to the bottom of the shoe. Um, so I'm just going to start doing the same thing again. Um, and now once I have it better aligned uh, to the bottom image, I'm just going to go back to perspective and kind of do the same thing, um, just having a general idea of what the shoe looks like in 3D and, and just making some um, assumptions about how that geometry might need to change. Um, just some image that wasn't, or some, some information that wasn't really visible from those uh, images. Um, so again, just some back and forth and tweaking but getting pretty close to a, a shoe shape of sorts. Um, I can also scale a couple lines, so if I just want these two lines to get closer to the center line, I just click scale 
and I can bring them in a bit like that so my toe is not so wide and I could do this uh, same thing actually with the bottom as well so this brings it in a little bit it's a bit more accurate uh, so you know I'll just go back and forth and try to make this look a little bit better but um, that's about all I need to do um, to generate a basic shoe model. Um,